Hi, Mrs. Young here, and today we are going to talk about worms. Ever since I was a little kid, I've always liked worms. I'm not sure why, I just, I think they're cool. So let's start with the characteristics. Worms are long, narrow, have long, narrow bodies without legs. That's what makes them different than, say, a centipede or a millipede. They don't have those legs. They have a head and a tail, and they have bilateral symmetry. And what that means is if you were to cut them from head to toe, essentially right down the middle, they would be the same on both sides, just like we would. If you were to cut us in half from head to toe, we would, be, we would have bilateral symmetry as well. They have tissues, organs, and body systems, just like we do. And it even has a brain that controls body functions. When it comes to reproduction, they can re worms can reproduce both sexually and asexually. Some worm species have separate sexes, meaning they have some that are female and then some that are male. And then some species, like earthworms, are considered hermaphrodites. What that means is that one worm has both male and female parts. So if the hermaphrodites were going to reproduce, the way that it would work is two worms, so let's use earthworms as an example, would meet up and they would exchange sperm and eggs. Very rarely would a worm fertilize its own eggs. So it is considered sexual reproduction. So there's three types of worms. There's flatworms, roundworms, and segmented worms. So flatworms have flat bodies, just like the name implies. Most of these are parasites. So examples would be tapeworms, flukes, and planarians. So tapeworms, which is a very common, um, a very common flatworm that animals get a lot and humans can get it too. The way that tapeworms work are that they absorb food from a host's digestive system. So here is the mouth, and when the tapeworm gets into the gut area, it'll attach to the intestine wall, and it will just suck out that nutrients as it comes through. So how does an animal get infected? So let's say we have this dog. This dog eats a rabbit, and the rabbit had tapeworm. After the dog eats it, that tapeworm will then go into the intestinal system of the dog. It'll start out small, but then as it absorbs nutrients, it's going to grow. It's going to fertilize eggs, and those eggs are going to leave the dog through its waste. The waste gets on the grass, the rabbit eats the grass, gets the eggs, and then the life cycle starts all over again. So now let's talk about roundworms. Roundworms tend to live in moist areas. They're tiny and they have cylindrical bodies. So you can see up here how small they are in comparison to, say, a penny. Now, roundworms have a one-way digestive system, which means food enters one way and exit, a waste exits another. Just like humans, we eat, the food's broken down, it's in the mouth, and then the stomach is digested in the intestines and then it leaves as waste. So examples of roundworms would be hookworm and pinworm. One common misconception is that ringworm is an actual worm. Well, that's not true. Ringworm is actually a fungus. They just call it ringworm. So the third group is segmented worms. These are your earthworms. Um, they have bodies that are made up of many linked segments. They have well-developed organ systems. They too have a one-way digestive system. And they also have a closed circulatory system, just like we have. And what a closed circulatory system is, is that move, blood moves within a connected network of blood vessels. It's not just out there willy-nilly in the body. 
So that's a little bit about worms, and I hope that was helpful.